Good afternoon, community. Whew. Even though the sun's not out, it's a very muggy and very warm day. We've kind of skirted the severe weather here. We're getting just a little bit of rain, uh, but we're under the severe threat again today. So I wanted to talk to you about our green bean harvest. We pulled the last bed this morning, guys, and I gotta say, I got the biggest harvest of green beans uh, that I've ever had. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm estimating about 30 pounds I was weighing as we were going, but I think it was probably a little bit over that. And we grew in a four by eight bed, um, a four by 10 bed, and then right outside the little high tunnel. This is the other bed that we exhausted. And then this, you know, was covered in weeds and we pulled these yesterday and got them all harvested. This is what I have out at my little farmer's market right now, guys. It's almost a full bushel basket. And I've set some aside to save some seeds. And um, if these don't sell today or tomorrow, uh, we'll be canning these up. I've already canned 17 quarts and I expect that we're gonna have some of these left over as well, but the market is doing very well, guys. We've had a lot of people come out and they're enjoying our, uh, our fresh picked veggies, uh, organically grown using the regenerative method. Our tomatoes are really coming in. And what I'm doing is if we don't sell these before they get over ripened, is every morning I go blanch and freeze them so that I can make my salsa or I can make my sauces with them. So that is our plan as these things are really starting to come in. You can see these tomato hedges. Greg has been in here working for a good week, pruning them back and he's finishing up the drip tape. But guys, we have a tomato hedge that is unbelievable. And we're getting very large tomatoes in here. Can you believe it? Holy moly. These things are loaded. And here's the other row. So things are really, really prospering. And uh, we are fixing to heat up. So he's trying to get all this done because it is gonna be hot, hot, hot come this weekend. We're hoping that it's short lived, but right now we're not seeing a lot. So our jalapenos and our poblanos and our bells are really starting to come in. I'll be canning some of those. We are still seeing cucumbers come in. These are the munchers. These are our pickling cucumbers down here and our squash and zucchini and guys check out the okra over there. So it's almost as tall as I am back behind that squash and zucchini. Sorry, I'm out of breath. We have been so busy this morning and this thick air kind of gets me and it's hot in here. But um, anyway, so what did we do different this year to quadruple, pretty much quadruple our harvest in green beans? And we would have been able to get more, but we decided to go ahead and pull that front bed this morning because we need to start thinking about planting other things in those three beds. So uh, this high tunnel, my goodness, it's incredible. So let's talk about what we did different on our green beans this year. So first off, you know that I treated my seeds with the mycorrhizal fungi and uh, that really helps the seeds get started. It helps the microbiome in our soil and we are trying to build our soil as quickly as we can. So again, we dusted our seeds with the mycorrhizal fungi before we planted them and it made our soil just beautiful. So check out this picture here and I want you to pay very close attention to the roots of these plants that we pulled up. Okay, the you can notice on the roots of these green beans, it's the those little clumps of dirt that are sticking to the roots. That's the crumb structure of the dirt. And uh, that's a real good thing. That's what you're looking for. When you pull the plants out and if they're just bare roots, you know, not so good. But when they have these, what they call them, uh, Rasta roots, you know, because they kind of look like dreadlocks. And the more they look like the dreads, the better. 
and then also and that comes with a good colony of the mycorrhizal uh, fungus and different different strains of the mycorrhizal uh, will interact with the with the green beans and help break the soil up and also the uh, the root exudates that come out it's like a gel that I think it's called the mucilage that's excreted by the uh, plant roots that uh, will also promote that crumb structure and that's what you want those sugars coming out the root exudates and then also you can notice the uh, <clears throat> there's some of these little nodules and those are uh, rhizobia nodules uh, from rhizobium bacteria and there's quite a few different strains so I don't know which strain uh, specifically that's coming from but they're known as uh, nitrogen fixers and they're making they're actually going into the roots and they're living coexisting symbiotic relationship uh, with the roots and they're uh, extracting nitrates from the soil and they're converting them to amino acids in those little nodules and making them plant ready and it's like little pockets of fertilizer for the plants in their roots so it's a good thing we can we pulled these out of uh out of the ground and uh it's a good sign so if you see that you know you're doing something good okay so you may ask how do you get this how do you promote this bacteria, this beneficial bacteria in your root zone of your plants? Well, I believe, as I understand it, EM, Effective Microbes, has it, and it has one of the bacteria. It's the Rhodopseudomonas palustris. That's a nitrogen fixer. That will do it. And then also uh, Bokashi, which contains, of course, EM in it uh johnson sue compost right um and then also a good uh compost a uh, good conventional compost like an elaine well not that elaine ingham but elaine ingham compost you know uh that's you can uh, get nitrogen fixers and it's a whole group again of uh, bacteria and i think they're the groups known as a uh, i think uh, PGPRs, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, I think it is. Anyways, so you could do like a, if you don't have any Bokashi, you could do a root drench of uh, EM, you know, and get, at least get one strain of it. And uh, again, that's, uh, that's what you want. So when you pull the roots out and you see that, that's when you examine your roots, you're, that's a good key that you're, and you'll know already you did well. But that's a good sign. So Greg has a load of knowledge in his head. He has been studying regenerative gardening now for a little over a year and been working on our soil. So when he's talking about EM, he's talking about the EM1, the effective microbes that we get from Terraganics. I'll put that link down below for you. So uh, if you're interested in that, you can go click on it. But uh, there's also the Johnson Sioux uh, method that you can use. So it's very important that you get your organic compost and that you, uh, your soil has all the nutrients that it needs because guys, after farming and gardening for so many years, we deplete our soil and we need to refurbish it and get it back to the way the good Lord intended it. And that's what we're doing. So it has really made a huge difference in our green bean harvest this year. Um, we are getting loads of green beans. And uh, in fact, we just finished up, like I told you, harvesting uh, what we had out there. And uh, he is using the same method for our tomato plants, for our pepper plants. And so things are really, really doing well here on the farm. So uh, yes, that green bean canning video is coming. I've got some right now in the canner. I just did not have time to do a video today um, because we, these things are just coming in so fast. Our harvest is coming in so fast. And I think it's a blessing from the Lord because we are fixing to start heating up. So it's good that we're starting to get our stuff now. But you need to already start thinking about your fall planting because we will start some seeds here probably the first of august to get ready for our fall garden so you want to make sure and start getting those on order i'm going to start getting mine on order and start planning out your garden and determine uh, what it is you want to grow this fall 
July and August are very hot months here in Texas, so we tend to have um, some downtime, uh, and it's going to be a lot of cleanup. You can see that high tunnel is just full, so those tomatoes that come down, we're going to replant uh, tomatoes for fall, so those have got to come down. Huh, so busy, so busy, but wanted to give you guys an update and talk to you about green beans and how important it is to get your soil in shape and uh, what we're doing to get there. Take care. God bless. See you soon.